you're with Terry Haran, entering your 22nd year as the helm of the cavern. Did you ever think you'd make it to 22 years? I still remember the day that uh, I was uh, introduced to the media and uh, President Thompson introduced me at the time and he says we hire football coaches around here every 30 years and I grabbed my heart and I was just like going oh my gosh 30 years it's already been 22 it's hard to believe I've been coaching football for 33 years uh, James it's, uh, it's crazy how fast it goes but you know what? As I sit here today, you know we're uh, we're getting closer to the opener, and and the same feelings, the same butterflies, the anxiousness, uh, the excitement of a new season. It's all there. So when you know you have that still, um, I'm far from being done. For this camp, has been a little bit different than last year because you were coming off the COVID year the year before. So now it's back to kind of normalcy. What has been different with this preseason camp than it has been last year? Yeah, I'd say it is back to normal. You know, we haven't had really the, the headache of testing and close contacts and stuff. Obviously, you know, we're being we're cognizant of the fact that, you know, there's still variants out there and, and then our meetings we're still, you know, separating guys uh, that way. But really it, it is pretty much everything's back to normal. It hasn't slowed us down at all and um, that's exciting. We're able to do what we need to do. and. You know, uh, NCAA switched some things with our practice schedules and stuff like that. But other than that, it's it, you know, it's it's we're on we're on course. Now, as you prepare for Valley City, this is the first game week that you've had. Have you had to do anything different because Valley City's already played that game? And but you've already known from last year you've played Valley City. So how has that implementation of the game plan changed for you from last year? Yeah, well, I think the biggest change for all of us is we're playing a Thursday night game. Uh, in all my years of being here, in the 22 years, this is the first time we've played a Thursday night game. So did you ever play a night game? And when you're playing? Never. Okay. Uh, that, not that I met. I mean, we played Wisconsin Eau Claire a few years back when we had Brandon Zilstra yeah. and those guys, but that was. A, that was a um, Saturday night game. You know, this is a Thursday night game, so it really messes up your your week prep going into it. Everything, you know, we're starting on the weekend versus you know starting on a on a Tuesday, Wednesday, so to speak. So um, that has been unusual and it's been a little bit odd. But I give credit to our staff. We've really uh, we're we're attention to detail type crew, and and uh, we've we've handled it really really well. Now speaking of Valley City, yeah, they have a game under their belt. They lost a heartbreaker to their big rival in Jamestown, and and um, it was a really good football game, and it was kind of the tale of two halves. You know, Jamestown jumped out on them, and then Valley City kind of rolled at the end and ended up losing in a game that could have gone either way. Uh, but it was an exciting game. It was great for college football, and, and I know this. Valley City is well coached. you got Dennis McCullough there, their head guy. 26th season at the helm. Um, so you're like the rookie in this. I know, right? <laughs> exactly. That's how I'm. That's how I'm portraying this, right? He uh, he's been there a while. Um, we go back a ways, though. I was at Breckenridge. He was at Frazee one year too. That uh, before he went to Valley City. So we've had some high school uh, tangos uh, back several years ago, but. Yeah, it's a game, you know, we look forward to it, right? They're well coached, um, it's at their place, it's under the lights. Um, they're coming off a, a, you know, a heartbreak loss to a rival, so you know they're going to be ready to go. Um, they're, you know, they've been in camp since the first week in August. We came in August 9th, so there is an advantage to play. A lot of my eyes over the years of coaching, a lot, of ha a lot happens between week one and week two. Uh, a lot of adjustments happen, maybe some personnel changes. Um, but, you know, you, you go with what you know, right? And we've played them last year, um, and, and we've exchanged a few films from last year as well. You know, we watched the game on, on Thursday night last week, so um, it, it's time to play. I don't know if a coach in this country would ever say it, we're ready to go <laughs> game one, but it's time to play. It's time for us to see somebody new. A couple of, uh, uh, talking about the covers now, on the offensive side of the ball, this will be your second year in that new offense. Have you seen the change in, let's say, your quarterback, Tanner Dubois, and how he's making reads, and some of the wide receivers, and the offensive line all returns? How have they adjusted to this yep. new, and how are they getting better in this new system? Leaps and bounds different from this year to last year. You know, we were just so much more comfortable, right? So during COVID is when we made the switch. So we didn't play during COVID, but we certainly practiced. So that was... That was the implementation of our new offense. And then last year was the first time of getting into games and understanding things. 
then we've had all spring to work with it. So I would say, you know, our veteranness of, of our offensive line, our quarterback, a lot of our skilled guys are back. Um, that is where it's been a breath of fresh air. It's just things just keep rolling and we keep getting better. We understand, you know, how are we reading our routes. We understand where we need to be, uh, how to set protections, all of that stuff that, you know, you're drinking water through a fire hose when it's your first time doing it. Well, we're more veteran-like. Now, that doesn't mean we have a ton of depth, so that's the piece that we've been really working on in fall camp to create that depth. Now, defensively, uh, you got some returns, but you're going to have some new faces that are going to step up. Just talk a little bit about players that might people might not recognize, but have a chance to do really well in that system. Yeah, well, I think on the on the defensive line, right out of the gates, you know, we got a Division One transfer in, in Preston Johnson. He will start at defensive end for us. Here's a kid that's uh, we recruited hard out of Dilworth Glendon Felton High School a couple years ago. Went to UND, um, really bulked up. He's extremely athletic, 6'3", 245-pounder, um, reads and reacts as good as I've seen, and, and he's coming to camp and, and, and looks great. And so he, we're throwing him right out there. And Chase Doctor, you know, one of our uh, greats, he's been playing a lot of football for us. He's a, he's a senior, could come back next year if he chooses. Um, he is, uh, you know, he's been playing since he was a freshman. Colin Thompson has really stepped up his game, young man out of Arizona that we really, really liked where he is kind of taken off to. But we've got got a lot of uh, got a lot of guys on the D line that we're that we feel we can continue to keep alternating through and keeping you know staying fresh you know, because uh, Valley City it's it, they're huge up front. I mean they, it's 900 pounds up front is what they have. They have four of their five starters back, so it's a veteran crew that is for sure. Now, one aspect of the game that you usually have a question mark is the kicking game, but this year you're not going to. you got all-conference kicker and punter Damian Silas back. How has he looked in camp? Yeah, he's looked really good. It's nice to have, uh, have him back again. Obviously, he's a sophomore, um, it's as strong a leg as I've had in our program in my 22 years. Um, extremely consistent. Um, you know, I have a lot of confidence in him, and, and he is... He, you know he's ahead of where he was even last year, so we're excited about that. One other piece to our specialty area, where I'm I'm really pleased to see. You know, JJ Lord is back as a long snapper, short snapper, but Noah Lacey, our freshman from Sparks, Nevada, um, is gonna is taking those duties over, and JJ will be his backup and being ready to go because JJ's having more contributions to the D line too, so his role has changed a little bit, but. Uh, Noah Lacey, I, I don't know if my 22 years, if I've had, you know, a, a long snapper, short snapper that's been point on like this guy. In fact, his high school coach told us that it's the best snapper he's ever coached, and we can see why. All right, you're getting ready for Thursday, and the big question is, are you going to be able to adjust to putting the flag out on Thursday morning as opposed to Saturday? If I can adjust in a practice week and playing on Thursday, I think I can adjust in getting the flag out uh, for Thursday morning for a night game, that's for sure. All right, good luck on yeah, Thursday, and we'll talk to you next week. Appreciate it.